All right. So we are the little tail end of chapter seven and going into chapter eight today of Exodus. Uh, we have our our ten plagues that we're looking at, and last time you, you talked about the plague of blood. Um, there's, there's a section here in the People's Bible that I, I just I just want to read word for word because I think it's I think it's that interesting and, and that that importance you know as we think about the plagues. Uh, so by placing these miracles into groups of three, we can find some interesting patterns. So in each series, the first and second plagues are announced to Pharaoh in advance. The third is given without previous warning. Right, so he sees frogs and, and, and blood coming, but he doesn't get told gnats, flies, and animal disease. Yes, but not boils. So, so two warnings and, and, and not a warning. So, in the series of three by three, leads up to a climax in number of ten, the number which is the symbol for completeness. Um, so, ten is a number that signifies God is God is done. Within the plagues themselves, uh, so I don't have to play the first one up there, of course. That's plague 10. Um, within the plagues themselves, there's a progression as an increase of severity. The last three are especially severe and destructive. So you would choose the flies over boils. You would choose darkness. Uh, you choose hail over darkness, right? They get worse. So with the Egyptian magicians by with Moses in duplicating the first two plagues. At the third, they try no longer, uh, they, but no longer succeed in their magic arts, but must confess this is the finger of God. So that's the first series. Uh, beginning with the second group of plagues, four and five and six, a distinction is made between the Israelites and the Egyptians. The land of Goshen, where the Israelites live, is spared. All right, so... So in that middle group, we have a distinction being made between the groups. Then uh, the first nine plagues deal with the phenomena that have to do with the world of nature. Some scholars try for this reason to explain the plagues as natural happenings occurring, which probably took place as natural disasters and in the course of time are exaggerated to make up the account as recorded in Exodus. So, so people try to explain these by nature, right? But you can't explain the last one by nature. You can't explain the death of the firstborn by, you know, the weather pattern change. Um, but as the author says here, we believe that each plague, however, was a miracle of God in which God used the natural means of that country to manifest his supernatural power. It says Egypt worshipped these powers of nature. In what more effective way could God display his power over all things, even those things which... They looked upon as deities. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about, about that in a second, especially with like a frogs today. Uh, they're frog god. But yeah, they, they were worshiping nature. And then if, if they really wanted to continue in worshiping nature, God says, look, you know, <laughs> your, your false gods don't exist. Or, and if, even if you wanted to say they did, they all turned on you. So maybe, maybe this isn't a good idea. Like anything, um, always always kind of careful, you know, not to find patterns in everything, you know. But certainly, it does seem like the Lord has some patterns here with with these plagues, and not just coincidental. With that said, um, all right, any comment or question on on last week's lesson or anything I read there? Let's jump into our text then. So, chapter seven, verse. So the last verse of chapter seven, verse twenty-five, and then through verse nineteen of chapter eight. I, I think one reader could do that for us. A volunteer would be nice. I'll do it. Okay, Wayne. So this is chapter seven, twenty-five. Seven days passed after the Lord had struck the Nile. 
Exodus 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and tell him that this is what the Lord says. Let my people go so that they may serve me. If you refuse to let them go, watch out. I will send a plague of frogs on your entire territory. The Nile will teem with frogs. They will come up and enter into your palace, into your bedroom, onto your bed, into your servants' houses, on your people, into your ovens, and into your kneading troughs. The frogs will come up on you, your people, and all your servants. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, streams, and ponds, and bring frogs up onto the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt. The frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. But the magicians did the same thing by their occult practices and brought frogs up onto the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Plead with the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people, and I will let the people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, I give you the honor of setting the time when I should plead for you, your servants, and your people, so that the Lord will rid you and your houses of the frogs. They will remain only in the Nile. Pharaoh said, Tomorrow, Moses replied, it will take place just as you have said, so that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. The frogs will leave you and your houses, your servants, and your people. They will remain only in the Nile. Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried out to the Lord about the frogs, which he had brought upon Pharaoh. The Lord did, as Moses said. The frogs from the houses, courtyards, and fields died. The people piled them up into heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he made his heart unyielding and did not listen to them just as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the ground and it become lice in the entire land of Egypt. They did so. When Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the ground, there were lice on the people and animals. All the dust of the ground became lice in the entire land of Egypt. The magicians tried to produce light by their occult practices, but they could not. So there were lice on the people and on the animals. The magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, and he did not listen to him, just as the Lord had said. All right. Thank you. Let's talk about the plagues. Uh, in the look section there, it says, In general, each plague becomes more severe than the last. They extend over a period of about 10 months and uh, so some are weeks apart some are front some are longer uh, the Egyptians buy with Moses in the first two plagues at the third they acknowledge that their magic arts are no longer effective from there this point on they are no longer part of the account um, so well, when it comes when it comes to the ma magicians here um, I, I think you have two options and I don't know which one is true. You know, you have either they are they are like the people on a, you know America's Got Talent, and they and they are they are able to reproduce these first two plagues. Um, I, I, I think the People's Bible um, Wendelin talks about how you know even even they can make like a snake be stiff, and then on its command, you know the snake comes to life, and so maybe it looks like a staff and. And so they, they do stuff like that. Um, or the other option is, you know, the devil is working through them, right? They, they are doing counterfeit signs and and such. And so this isn't, you know, a, a magic trick you can 
can be explained. It is something supernatural. Um, I probably lean more heavily towards that explanation, especially with, with how grand these, these plagues are. Um, but again, we don't know to what extent, you know, this, do, they make a, do they make a room filled with frogs? And then Pharaoh says, well, okay, I get it. Moses just did it on a grander scale. Um, we, we, we don't know exactly, right? But, at, at, but what's the point, of course? The point is, at some point, even, even their trickery, even, even the devil can't use them to replicate uh, the plagues. So, Joni, a thought? I'm wondering how you come up with the 10 months. Because I don't remember ever reading it. Um, because we got some uh, hail and I, I know the latter part we're in February because of uh, harvest and things, I understand. Um, so I think we, we kind of understand the, the end dates and then maybe we work backwards a bit. Um, that's a good question that I'm not prepared maybe to answer fully, but um, that's the part I do, do recall. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. there, there's the answer. Um, I, I had looked that up, and I just quit reading after a while because there was a lot of detail, technical stuff that they looked at, and, and finally somebody said, you know, this would be about right. But they looked at a wide variety of things in history to try and figure out how long it really lasted. Like I said, yeah. I you know, and sometimes you don't like that either because then they then they might start saying, well, they might say, you know, frogs are only going to be out in these months, you know, and then you have the flies or more maybe more the fall, you know. And then you think, you know, how much nature do we want to explain these these plagues with? You know, if God wants to send flies in the middle of middle of us, the snowstorm, He can do it. Um, yeah, so. these are extraneous. Um, things that happened here, they weren't ordinary things that happened in an ordinary year. You know, we'll, we'll get with, we'll get Moses uh, in the wilderness with the snakes coming out, right, and people being bitten and looking to the bronze snake, and, you know, you hear explanations about that one, too, saying, you know, this might not necessarily be, you know, snakes God created that, that afternoon and they all bit the people. They might literally have been there, but you just never see a wall come to life like this and be in one location. So, I don't know, you could do the same thing with Jonah's whale, you know, you could be like, <laughs> where'd this whale come from? How did it know it would be there? Was it, did it, you know, and uh, you just you just trust God did it. And um, if, if that whale appeared and disappeared, those snakes appeared, disappeared, and you know, that, that's where you just lean more upon, yeah, I, I'd rather say this is something supernatural and but back to the time frame, right? That's that's where people will probably tend to start saying, well, if they don't have hard facts, they might lean more towards, you know, this is this is the season of frogs that we, they would deal with. It, so it, yeah, it almost goes to lend yourself. You know, we watched the movie, you know, Moses, and it seemed like Moses was going every other day. You know, what I mean, he was <laughs> he was just uh, you know going to Pharaoh and. Probably ten months is more of a realistic time frame that he almost like God almost wanted well you know the people to sink in you know that you know, this was coming at them. That, that does seem to be God's mode of modus operandi, right? I mean, he 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 is pretty patient with his warnings and such in general. I mean. Maybe the handwriting on the wall <laughs> is the one example where the king died the next day. Uh, but in general, yeah, it seems like 10 months would be more like. And, and, and we have people that went over here, right? We have the Israelites that aren't, um, you know, gung-ho as much as they could be or should be until these plagues all finish. So. But yeah, movie magic screws us up, and pictures screw us up, thinking it all happens quickly. I mean, I can't imagine going 10 months and being thick last week when it rained about every day or every other day. Just about everybody okay enough already. Thanks, Lord, but enough. 
I can't imagine enduring this for 10 months. I just can't picture this. Well, and that's the thing, too. Right? We don't have, we don't have, you know, we, we would like to say, you know, how, did, were the frogs there five days or five weeks? You know, and I don't, at least we can answer that, right? So, um, so there's probably some plagues here that have severity of shorter periods of time. I mean, it, yeah, but we got a plague of boils. I mean, oh, I mean, if we're gonna have a plague of boils, I, I would think we're a little bit longer than just that this is a bad afternoon. So, but, but things can happen. I don't know, watch this video of uh, the Galapagos Islands and the iguana or whatever that creature is comes out and is trying to go across the beach of sand, and you wouldn't believe the snakes that came out of the rocks. I mean, we're talking. 50s, 60s, out of nowhere, chasing them. Right, and we do get this impression that the frogs don't last that long because they have, I mean, they have a conversation pretty quick about it, don't they? Um, so, um, so with the frogs, Alfred Aderzyme writes in his Old Testament Bible history, it must be remembered that the frogs are was also connected with the most ancient forms of idolatry in Egypt. So that was their object of worship once more became their curse. Um, so I, I had to look this up myself. Here's a, here's a nice picture of their their frog goddess. Here's, you know, what, a, what an ugly looking, <laughs> looking, looking deal. Get your frog, frog headed goddess. I saw other pictures. Of the frog goddess, um, she's uh, they'll give her a human head too. So I don't know. If she went back and forth. She was married to a well. She was one of the four wives of a, a different god that had a, a goat head. Which um, yeah. So the goddess name is Heket. H e q e t. Uh, Goddess of childbirth and fertility. So the thought would be that the frog goddess was, uh, you know, frogs reproduce like rabbits, basically, right? So the frogs are has a frog goddess for reproduction. Um, so yeah, her her husband was Kanum. Her husband created all living beings on the Potter's Wheel, and she breathed life into them. So her goat. Husband made people, and she was the one that breathed life into them. Um, midwives called themselves servants of Heket. So the Egyptian midwives looked up to her as their, their god. Um, women wore amulets of Heket during pregnancy and kept ivory knives inscribed with Heket's name in the birthing chamber to ward off evil spirits. So if you got Got anybody pregnant in your family? You got to get them a, a frog headed necklace. I should try. Um, she assisted at the birth of three pharaohs. Um, so the pharaohs were born because she helped out. Uh, she was the goddess of rebirth as well as birth. And she used her power to bring uh, another god back to life, named Osiris. She appears in the pyramid text as part of the ritual of pharaoh's journeying soul. So, so she's part of the getting the pharaoh through through the pyramid up to whatever heaven is for the pharaoh, um, and and she goes way back. So, um, his guy poking his Lord poking uh, them with their their frog goddess. Again, Moses doesn't tell us, but interesting interestingly enough. Um, that's a cat. So, what a vile mess. <laughs> what a mess, yeah. What a vile mess. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, verse 16, strike the dust of the ground. Aderzyme writes, uh, now the, the fertile soil, which the Egyptians also worshipped, uh, became their curse, right? So, um, so the Lord kept... Hitting them where, where it hurts. Questions? Yeah, go ahead. I just question. I'm reading there uh, in a different version of the Bible. Are lice and gnats the same thing? 
Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> is it lice? Is it mosquitoes? Is it gnats? They're not the same thing, but we don't know what the thing is. Um, it affects animals and people alike, and um, Luther translated it lice, and I think, um, does the NIV say gnats, I think? Yes. Um, and the King James version says lice, too. Uh, so yeah, I did spend some time on this, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll borrow the line. It got a little confusing because we just we just don't know um, the way the way they talk about the diseases. I mean, it seems more than mosquitoes, <laughs> uh, some sort of flying, jumping insect that that you don't want. Um, and, and so that's that's the confusion there. So we got a Hebrew word that. Uh, we took our best stab at it. Luther took his best stab at it, but uh, yeah. John. Well, it just, it just bothered me that for how long we've been reading gnats, and all of a sudden, <laughs> our student puts out a new Bible, and as he read it, I, I didn't really see anything. Why? Why change all those words? Because I think my Bible is just as clear as his. It just concerned me. Why do we spend all this time and money? I guess I'm getting off the subject, but why does the Senate do this to read one more Bible? Or answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, one, of the, one of the reasons was because they were changing the NIV to an unsatisfactory version. So, so yeah, But the Senate did not pay for it. It was done by private individuals, including Dr. Brug and our son. And a whole team of volunteers who then offered it to the publishing house and, and Concordia and the publishing house grant. So it was done. It's not part of Synod funding at all. But it's sold through the publishing house. I you know, I would say and I and I, I, pulled, I pulled a remark, but I'm gonna I'm actually gonna say it. When, whenever said when someone says this is what the King James says, I, I almost cringe thinking, well, the King James wasn't a very scholarly translation and and I know that offends and rip people apart and uh, but but the truth is the King James relied a lot on the Latin and the Latin was one very deviation from the Hebrew right so so when someone says the King James says this and Luther says that I know the the King James version was you know a translation of a translation more so than Luther's Bible which was him going from the, the Hebrew right to the German. Um, Still, how do we know what's right? Then? I mean, you, 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 we're just supposed is, is, is it tomato or tomato? Is it kitty corner or catty corner? Is it, I mean, <laughs> this, this is our conversation right now because I, I can't tell you lice or gnats or, because we don't, short, short of getting a, a Hebrew, our, our Hebrew is, the oldest Hebrew manuscript we have is a thousand BC, so or eight, yeah, a thousand, I'm sorry, thousand eighty. So, so we have three thousand years of not having manuscripts that could could give us more insight, right? So, and we don't have other old Hebrew writings that talk about the flies in my field when I was a farmer, right? We can't, we can't, we can do that in Greek, right? If you see a word you don't understand in Greek, you're like, well, I'll read some Plato. And I'll read some Socrates. And how did they did they ever use this word fly? Did they use this word gnat? But you can't do that. There's there is no Socrates of of the Hebrew language. It's all right. It's all together in the Bible. Um, so so if you, you can't look to Amos and you can't look to Isaiah, they didn't use this word. Then you're kind of stuck with flying pesky insects. So so you say there is no. You say there is no English word for the Hebrew word used for this plague. I'm saying there is an English word for it, but we don't have enough Hebrew words to realize which word that is. <laughs> right. So I mean, you, you you need you need three or four examples of of what this animal is in Hebrew. You know, 
to, or someone else talking about it. To you know, there's no dictionary, right? It's not like, well, here's your Old Testament Bible and here's your dictionary they used at the time. But you know, if I see a French word I don't know, I just go to their dictionary, right? It helps explain it. So. I think of gnats as a mosquito flying, but, and I think of lice just as something that's crawling in your hair. And but they do jump. They do yeah. jump. They no, but they don't, they don't fly. fly. No, they don't fly, but they jump. They jump. Yeah. They're a different family. Mm -hmm. Mosquitoes and gnats are the same family, but lice are not part of their family. And I, 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 at the end of the day, I think, I, I think you just say they were miserable. You know, yeah, exactly. right? They were miserable. Um, Say bug. <laughs> bug. I like that one. Right. But, I, but, but I hear, but I hear, but I hear the frustration. I, 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 I'm sure people have the same frustration when the NIV came out and I changed some words too. But I, I get it. It, it gets us talking ten minutes about something maybe that, or we get hung, we get hung up on stuff, right? It's like a little. It's like a little nail sticking out of a park bench sometimes. You read a word, it's different. And it's uh, three different things, but we don't want any of them. But could, could, you, could you accuse the a Bible translation of being too scholarly? You could, yeah. I, I, would, I would say that's fair at points. I think, I think we uh, sometimes change things because, you know, we, we, we're really smart. I do the same thing too. I probably go off on tangents in a sermon that I don't need to, because I'm because I'm uber intelligent, right? That's what Kathleen was going to say. <laughs> oh, thanks. Don't put words in my mouth. No, as long as we've rabbit trailed a wee bit on this, uh, there's one other one that yeah, I yeah. just took took me like my breath away when uh, Moses and Pharaoh had the discussion of when he would say goodbye to all the frogs, and Pharaoh said tomorrow, and I'm like. What an idiot! Why right now? I just like. I made a comment. I made notes on that too. I have a th I have a theory. Yeah, so it's a, what do you think? What do you think he said tomorrow? I think this is. I think this is. My theory is a good one. Was I wonder he, if you gave him a chance he, to get away. Was he actually contemplating at that moment that he would let the people go, and this way he had a whole day to think about it? He's all made so. You don't, it doesn't really say. Doesn't but, say. I mean, it's a possibility. What's yours? I, th I think he's just a stubborn jerk. I, I think. He likes frogs. <laughs> I don't think he likes frogs at all. I, I mean, have you ever. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying not to be, give a personal example to show my stubbornness, but. Um, Maybe maybe you get in an argument about about something. Like maybe you're maybe you're just arguing with your spouse or something about something silly, like mowing the lawn. Are you gonna mow the lawn today? You should mow the lawn today. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. And then then you're you know you're like I should mow the lawn. No, don't go mow the lawn. It's dumb. And then and then your you know, your spouse says, you know, go ahead and mow the lawn. Just, I'm sorry, that was a dumb dumb argument. And then and then you're like no. I'll mow the lawn when I feel like it. You're not gonna tell me to mow the lawn. You just told me not to mow the lawn. And then like three hours then like three hours later, after after you know you made the decision and, and you put your spouse in their place, you're like you go out and mow the lawn, right? I mean Pharaoh's Pharaoh's like I mean Pharaoh, I think Pharaoh's doing the same thing. He's like, Oh, you're gonna get rid of the, the problem, right? And I can't do anything about it. Well, well, I don't have a real problem with this, you know, so we'll live with it another day. Tomorrow you can do it, you know. I'm not really that bothered. That, that's 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 the how I see it. I, I think I think he's dumb for waiting another day, but I think the, the, the stupidity is his, his stubbornness. Like because I was with you, I was like, uh when to does next Nile's good, Moses? You know, those plagues terrible. But tomorrow is just his way of puffing up his feathers and saying. I'm not really that. Oh, I mean, I'm still in charge, Moses. What are you? What are you doing here? Take it or leave it. That's my. But you've probably had conversations like that with someone, right? We do. Your lawn story is way too much detail to be made up. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yes, yes, I'm thinking of something that wasn't Marvel. Oh. <laughs> but yes, way too detailed. But, um, you know, that's when you get like two German people in the same household, right? That's just, <laughs> sometimes how things happen. Sometimes there's just no explanation for what some people do. Men, and then, men or women. No. Um, at any rate, uh, the miracle is the they did happen the next day, right? I mean, that's that takes you out of that realm of nature of like saying, "Well, this was just the the, the, the fall breeze brought these these little flying insects," right? I mean, when Moses says stopped, it stopped. Um, so, and, and plus, I don't know. I mean, it also takes it. I thought too. It also takes it out of the realm of of Pharaoh being in control. So if Pharaoh said stop it, you know, it would feel like, hmm, maybe, 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 maybe the gods listen to me. Maybe my prayers are answered. You know, and it's, he definitely can't take any credit. Um, and he shows that he is, you know, just being stubborn. But, well, good, good questions. Um, so, thoughts in the paper here. What? Discuss what it was like during the plague of frogs and the plague of gnats. Um, how is the plague of frogs described? And and gnats. I mean, they have this in common. Smelly. <laughs> they're smelly and they're and they're everywhere, right? A nuisance. Nuisance. Um, Want another personal example of rodents in the house and how, how one is a is a disaster? Um, how about everywhere, right? Um, and you can't you can't stop it. They talk. The, the, the frogs talk. Frogs talk. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose if we were in the Midwest, it had to been a, a plague of mites, right? Or in your bed. Or a plague of bats. Yeah. So, question two: What truth was the plague of frogs supposed to impress on Pharaoh? <laughs> that was just to show that there was no one like the real God. Okay. Yeah. It, the, he had the true, the true God. Uh, was a true God. You're yeah. not going to be happy until you let my people go to worship the true God. Yeah. <clears throat> All three, the magicians were able to imitate the plague of frogs, but not the plague of gnats. Um, they were forced to acknowledge that the great God over all was behind this plague. In this context, what were they confessing a about Moses and the people of Israel. Kind of along the same lines, huh? This was an act of God. Yeah. It's the finger of God. These guys, these guys are for real. Yeah. So not a, not a confession of faith, right? I mean, he's it's kind of Kind of saying, well, we have these Egyptian gods, and you have a god, and you know, well, your god is, in his mind, probably as real as as the frog god. Um, just his god is on vacation, maybe, and the Israelite god is not. Seems to be where his 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 mind is at. Wait, it reminds me of a little bit of when our Lord returns, that every knee will bow and say, "Yes, you are the Lord." And it doesn't sound like they're doing that really because of love, but reluctant. It reminds me of that. Yeah, he's, yeah, his, his, he, he's without any other explanation, but yeah, the Lord is, is God. The Lord is God. Uh, but he can certainly say that without repenting of his sin and listening to that. Yeah. 
going off the subject a little bit. Oh, we've been off the subject a little bit. It kind of parallels and reminds me of how the people's reaction was to Trump shooting. There were a lot of unbelievers that I think realized that this this wasn't natural. This I don't know, but to me, even I think there were a lot, even a lot of unbelievers then acknowledged that there was a higher power yeah. that took place. I could be wrong. You know we. I mean, when you talk, when you hear all the marksmen, all the people who are excellent shooters, they said this was a slam dunk. Yeah, I think I could have made the shot. Um, but yeah, he turned his head at just the right time, and I mean, you could, you could, you know, you could never, you no could probably do it a million times and never just no hit someone's ear. Yeah. Political beliefs are that to me was that wasn't a human doing that. Yeah, it, again, you you always know, careful to climb up in the god's head. You know, is he is, is he is he is he blessing the nation? You can I mean, go down that path. You can go down the path. I'm of, not even looking at that yeah. because that is political. I'm just saying I think there were a lot of unbelievers that even had to acknowledge that there was a higher being. That's all. That it was. I mean, it, like, it was as close like to a miracle you've seen. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they they believe in God. They obviously don't. But even these magicians realize that. They, I couldn't do this. Yeah. I mean, so, so I'll keep it in e Egyptian terms and you can apply it to today. I mean, is, are these plagues uh, to the benefit of the nation? Yeah, right? They, they are showing God's power and his deliverance through Moses. This is to, to increase, increase their faith uh, and blessings. Is, is this a wake-up call to Pharaoh and a lot of Egyptians? God's trying, right? He's trying to change their hearts and minds uh, to, to his will. Um, and, and I think you can say God does both through miracles sometimes, right? You know, one, one person's wake-up call uh, <laughs> is another person's strength and call to Called a success in the future. Um, so, I I know these miracles are blow, brushed off by Pharaoh, right? <laughs> uh, they weren't, they, you know, but Lord, Lord willing, uh, what we could call as close to a miracle as possible, humanly speaking, won't be brushed off by the individuals in our nation, right? So, um, but yeah. Did I hear that they said Trump never went to church? So, I've not heard anybody say he doesn't, never went to church. Um, but as far as speaking on his, his faith, I'm probably not the guy that's ready to do that. Um, or Biden, by the way. Um, yes, um, where are we at? Well, we have four. What was Pharaoh's reaction to the, these two plagues, even though his own musicians confessed that God had brought them on the land? His heart got to hate, hardened even more. Yeah, so he, he hardened his his heart. So uh, verse 19, the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hard, so he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had said. So I misspoke, or I was thinking incorrectly. So he never said it was the finger of God. His magicians did, huh? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I take that back if I misspoke. Um, I don't think you did miss it. Okay. But yeah, so 
clear to everybody else but him. So apply Pharaoh's actions put on display the depth of the hardness of the simple human heart. How could anyone see what Pharaoh saw till and still harden his heart? And yet it happens all the time. You can you think of any other examples? Uh, <laughs> people people you know, deny miracles all the time. Again. And see some videos about that. Like, it's crazy. Um, we used, people still deny the, the Holocaust, and they'll see stuff that's very well documented, and we just don't want to believe it. Um, uh, Joan? Uh, and like evolution, they absolutely insist yeah. that evolution yeah. is right. When it's proved wrong so many times, there's so many things. Yeah. It's endless. Like, like, that mountain in Oregon that uh, blew up, and they said it was going to be a million years before it was back to what it was before, and now forests are all back. It's all. Oh yeah, and there was a certain movie that yeah said the, the, the sea level would have yeah. swallowed uh, Nantucket by now, and it hasn't. So. Yeah, Yellowstone had uh, those fires, and the trees were all going to fall over in twenty years, and. All the fire, those trees that were burned up are still standing 60 years later. Uh, can't even get short term things right half the time. But, yeah. It's a character trait that some uh, refuse to admit if they're wrong uh, because that would destroy them personally. So they, there's endless proof for all kinds of things, but if I would admit I was wrong, then I'm shattered as a person. So. Uh, or they gloss over it, even for this example of that it was a miracle about it didn't end up with the assassination working, is that some people like, uh, for example, one commentator might say that was the hand of God, the other two commentators that I watched glossed over and went right on to the next subject and now what's for lunch or something. So yeah. it's, a, it's a character thing that some people can't say, I'm wrong, this is right. But I, don't you think that a lot of that has to do with if you acknowledge, for example, there is a creator or there is divine intervention, then you have to become accountable yes. to a higher power and yes. you, don't want, you don't want that. Yeah. Yes. And that's why they, they, they're just really that's guarding their turf. If, yeah, if, if, there's a, if there is a God who can help you, yeah. then, then there, there is a God that might have reason not to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody that now you're accountable to. Yeah, yeah. that's in it for sure. Yeah, and, and so it's yeah, what, whatever they can do to yeah, well, if you think not have that guilty conscience or even start to think that they have to be accountable to someone. If you think about it, our mission work is we tell the people this is your your savior died for you, whether they believe it or not. Our job is to tell them. We're Moses. So, uh, so God continued to send his judgments on Egypt. Pharaoh continued to harden his heart against God's command. Flies. How about flies? Um... Yeah, we can start there. Look, looking at the first twenty through the end of the chapter. Here to have a, a reader there. Then the Lord said to Moses, "Get up early in the morning and confirm Pharaoh." And he goes to the water and says to, to him. This is what the Lord says, let my people go so that they may worship me. If you do not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies on you and your officials, on your people and on to your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of flies and even the ground where they are. But on that day, I will deal directly, differently with the land of Goshen where my people live. No swarms of flies will be there. 
so that you will know that I, the Lord, am in this land. I will make sorry distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will occur tomorrow. And the Lord did this. Dense swarms of flies poured into Pharaoh's palace and into the houses of his officials. And throughout Egypt, the land was ruined by the flies. The Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Go sacrifice to your God here in the land. But Moses said, That would not be right. The sacrifices were offered to the Lord our God would be distasteful. Detestable. I can't say that word to the Egyptians. And if we offer sacrifices that are detestable in your eyes, we will not will they not stone us? We must take a three day journey into the desert to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God as he commanded us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go to offer sacrifices to the Lord your God in the desert, but you must not go very far. Now, pray for me. Moses answered, as soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord, and tomorrow the flies will leave Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Only be sure that Pharaoh does not act deceitfully again, again by not letting the people go to offer sacrifices to the Lord. Then Moses left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord, and the Lord did what Moses asked. The flies left Pharaoh and his officials and his people. Not a fly came. But this time also Pharaoh hardened his heart and would not let the people go. When the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go so that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go and keep holding them back, watch out, because the hand of the Lord will bring a very severe disease on your livestock, which is in the field. It will be on the horses, donkeys, camels, herds, and flocks. But the Lord will make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of the Egyptians, so that not one of the Israelites' livestock will die. The Lord appointed a time by saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this in the land. So the next day... That is what the Lord did, and the livestock of the Egyptians died, but not, but none of the livestock of the Israelites died. Pharaoh checked and found out that not even one of the livestock of the Israelites had died, but Pharaoh's heart was unyielding, and he did not let the people go. Yeah. So, the number 10 signifies completeness. In this case, the 10 plagues are God's complete judgment on Egypt, and complete and a complete show of his power over man, animals, nature, and false gods of Egypt. So, what happened with the flot, the plague of flies and the plague of the livestock? They were supposed to go, go worship. You know, Pharaoh kind of Tries to half compromise, doesn't he? Says like, well, we can, we can do it right here. It's okay. <laughs> um, but no, they're, they're not going to settle for that. And so these plagues come. Um, so, many of you experienced anything like, like this? Like a bunch of flies or death of animals? You don't want fly in the house. Get the swatter. <laughs> I think we see it on the news sometimes, right? There's diseases of cattle and such. Um, and sometimes when you go in the woods and you get bit up, you know, because you happen to be in the wrong area at the wrong time. And they're done that. Yeah. I mean, it was almost like everything had died. You know, if you see something die, the flies are just all over it. Must have been like that just for living things, right? Um, yeah. You know. Seems like though uh, the first plagues, you know, the Israelites were part of the the problem, I and mean, the blood and all of that. But then now it starts out where it only happens to them; it doesn't happen to us. And 
so God starts almost saying, I, I'm going to do it all to the Egyptians, and your livestock are not going to be affected. Right, and he's not going to, I don't think I'm wrong on this, he's not going to keep this pattern, but, but yeah, this is where it's, maybe, it's like, wow, how can, how can this plague be here and not there, you know? I, I suppose someone could also say, why did the first three plagues hit the Israelites? Um, why not just always have them on the Egyptians? I don't know. I'm not smart enough to answer that. I'm just dumb enough to ask it. Um, well, with the Nile and turning to blood, I mean, the Nile was where the Egyptians were, and the Nile was where reminds me of it. Reminds me of when we have on TV weather warnings. And this is going to be stopped at Marathon County Line. And I think, no. Uh, I, I, think, I, I, I think you can always say, of course, the Lord disciplines those who he loves. So he, some of these plagues disciplined the Israelites. Uh, they, they endured them too. Uh, but, but there comes a point where, yeah, this message is, going to get sh is getting sharper, isn't it? Um, and... Pharaoh should be really wide-eyed at, at this. Like, he should let these people worship their God. Um, I saw another hand. Oh, I was wondering if all of the livestock of um, the Egyptians were killed and died, how could just a few months later the firstborn die in the Passover? It's like, well, they were already gone. I know that this had to do with people, but the, the Passover did, but it also had to deal with uh, firstborn it, it of their animals. And, yeah. and so. So, so there's no indication that this wiped everything, all their horses and donkeys and camels, out completely, I don't believe. Um, so that's all. Yeah, it just said all. Yeah. Um, so then my... So what verse are you looking at there? So some, uh, what is that? Part of six. So six, next six. Yeah, six. All the livestock of the Egyptians died. I suppose there were births that happened after all of the livestock died, yeah. you know, in the time frame. There would I, have been some animals. That might have I mean, is this... Is this is this talking? You know, again, I'd say is this talking about the species? Like, like there was not a species. I mean, we just went through that list of animals. Are, are, yeah. is, it, is it more of a comment that no, no, none of their domesticated animals were spared? All of them died. Um, were affected. What was it, hyperbole? Um, Jesus, can you? God, can you use hyperbole? Yeah. Right. So we do know that. All can't mean every single one because the, the, the next the next plate wouldn't make any sense. Um, do you, do you want to make the case that uh, these are all the the milk cows and and feeder cows? Like, is this you know did, did God spare the the, the, the young ones? Um, again. Details, details, details. Um, it, it, it wasn't like you had fifty cattle and like one one died. It was it was very noticeable, right? I mean, I think that's more of the point. Uh, John, my study Bible says that all the livestock of the Egyptians died. That is all that were left out in the fields. Protected livestock remained alive. And it, this is in verses nineteen to twenty-one. So we didn't get that far yet. So. So they're referencing 21, huh? 19 to 21. Huh? Okay, we're just bringing your livestock in. So the, yeah. Um, I, I have a yeah. theory that even if all the Egyptian cattle died, they could go to the Israelites and say, yes. give us your cattle and go so then they yeah, got more cattle. Right. So or the Israelites right. since they were their slaves, they could just go and take them or right. buy them, whatever they did. So right. there's no problem with that. Uh, I mean, that would be good Jews. They probably, you know, sold a lot of their, you know, cattle. Yeah. 
So I, I have no That's problem with that. Yeah. All the Egyptian ones died and they got more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the best theory. The prices went up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there, there's no such thing as slave rights and slave property. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, very, very good point. Because there, there is, there is, a, there is, there, Pharaoh does know that their cattle is okay, right? That we do know that, right? It's got his attention. Um, I think you're right. Well, it's not like they're in a vacuum either. There's Numidians and other neighboring people that tra travel into Cairo all the time and back and forth. So. Yeah, it, well, and that gets a good point, too. Do we, at, at some point, the, the storm warning ends at Marathon County, right? And <laughs> where, 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 does, where does the plague end on the Egyptian border, right? Yeah. You know, it's definitely, it definitely ends in that Goshen, so we can get some Goshen animals. Does it ends anywhere else? Um, but but a good point too. I mean, if I was if I'm the richest country in the world and I lost all my cattle, I'm just, I'm just gonna chuck it in from Mexico. You know, I'm not gonna go without cattle very long. I'm gonna pay for it, buy it. Um, yeah, and, and maybe too, this helps us understand. Maybe these aren't like next day things, right? I mean, it's not like one day the my cattle dies and the next day I have all my cattle. A lot of cattle replaced, and then, and then there's the uh, hail that comes or something, right? I mean, there's some time in here. So. But the cattle were saved that they brought into buildings, just the ones that were left outside of the field. But that's what you're, yeah, that's what we're implying here with the, the next plague. Yeah, it seems. So, again, all cattle, again, there's, there's like kind of an age distinction. There's a distinction that seems to be between being inside and outside. Um, it's stuck, right? I mean, it's it's just bad, um, and you know, if you thought running out of toilet paper was a, a crisis. Uh, you lose 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 all your cattle in the field. Um, yeah. So again, none of these plagues are decapitating the nation, right? I mean, God is still being gracious in the fact that he, they're going to limp along. Uh, so, uh, well, that is that is our time to be. Uh, so I'd say we ended. Where are we at? We ended there, kind of number two. Just briefly, maybe I'll just number three there. What change is discussed in verses twenty-two and twenty-three? Goshen is spared, right? So God spares. God spares his people, and maybe we'll we'll leave on that note here. Um, Unfortunately, um, not unfortunately, but uh, I was not thinking about this till Pastor Maki mentioned it yesterday. We have VBS next week, so uh, Bible class here is not going to be practical. So uh, we will we will skip next week in uh, honor of the children being in God's Word, and uh, so. They're going to be everywhere. They'll probably have, they'll begin here, and then they'll have some snacks. This will be the snack area. They'll, they do stations, yeah. So uh, we will we will convene Wednesday. I think it's like even the 30th or 31st, what the calendar says. 31st. Um, so let's, uh, let's thank our Lord for his word. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and